Yes, yes, folks, this is Man of Real here, here to talk about new movie I saw recently, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, is it any good? Here are five things that I thought worked about it and five things that didn't. It seems logic to find to me that actors who were originally based in Oklahoma, Logan Kim and Celeste O'Connor would find themselves in New York City doing exactly the same work. How did they get there? How, just how did that work with their parents, that conversation? It's a stretch, didn't buy it. That reporter kid, Logan Kim, is really, really good and feels exactly like a Ghostbuster to me. He feels like an extension of a Goonie, actually. He fits right into that Amblin 80s vibe that they're going for. I really love the ghost that could turn into anything and I hope that if there are future movies that they definitely bring that character back. A really good addition to the Ghostbusters series that seem to that seem to just fit like, like a perfect glove. Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon and Finn Wolfhard's roles are surprisingly underdeveloped in this one, given that they're, on paper at least, three of the leads. That leaves Mackenzie Grace's Phoebe to be the true lead of this movie. I wasn't so much a fan of the um, mini marshmallow people. They were fun in the first film. They are potentially overplayed at this point. Seems like, spoiler alert, that they might be sort of set up for more shenanigans going forward, but a little part of me feels like they've overstayed their welcome now. Yeah, it might be time to get rid of those gooey little bastards. Much of the callbacks work, such as revisiting a certain spooky library seen initially in the original Ghostbusters, but the callback at the end, bringing back a cheering triumphant crowd, which is a callback to the original Ghostbusters or maybe both Ghostbusters, just doesn't work. Like, based off of what happened before, which was everything froze over, the idea that people would find themselves outside this sort of fire station turned Ghostbusters station cheering with placards just seemed ridiculous. William Atherton in this, who we all love from the 80s, who was always played that snivelling authority politician type figure. He's in this. It's good to see him, but he doesn't really work in this. I would say that it's one of the fails of this movie that you just feel like, how would this guy still be in office? What the hell is going on? And he's an older, slightly more cuddly version of what he was, so you don't want to slap him in the face. Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd's roles are kind of perfect within the film. Not feeling forced or simply fueled on nostalgia really at all. Unlike, sadly, Annie Potts, who's sort of just there. The introduction of Kumali Nanjiani as the fire god guy dude is inspired and he might just be the guy who walks away with the whole film. Bill Murray is called back to be glib in what is essentially an underdeveloped role. However, he gets one super killer scene alongside Kumali that makes up for the lack of development in other places in probably what is the best scene in the entire movie. Overall an enjoyable film, good world building and a fun addition to this world that was initiated with Ghostbusters Afterlife. Despite what the critics say, it's fun. I mean, me and my my friends enjoyed it well enough. We laughed. There are some lulls, yes, but overall it was fun. I hope they continue with it and I hope when they continue with it, you know, at the end of the day, it has that Ghostbusters vibe. I think we underestimate how hard it is to pull that off in the right way. And that Ghostbusters vibe made me feel good. Thumbs up from me.